everyone and welcome back to today's video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about rabbits and getting them spayed or neutered. Now this is going to cover questions that you should be asking and things to expect from getting your rabbit spayed or neutered. Now this is a surgery that is more risky in rabbits than it is with dogs and cats, but I really believe that with choosing the right vet, you significantly increase your chances of success. And really the reason that it is risky is because there's a lot of people doing it that aren't very good at it. So let's cover all of those things today. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to follow me over on Instagram and TikTok. First, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Kalopa, who was super nice to let me try out their humidifiers. Where I live, we often have humidity below 20%, which isn't good for us or the animals. So I like to keep humidifiers in every room in the house, but I do get really tired of filling them up. That's why I was really excited to try their nine liter extra large humidifier for big rooms. This thing is awesome and keeps the room way more comfortable for me and the pets. They are great for reptile rooms and plants and just a good thing for your home in general. This one lasts up to 36 hours and is really easy to use and fill up. Lights can be turned off for sleep mode and it's very quiet. Check them out yourself at the link down below and it's a great way for you to support this channel. Now of course the first thing I want to point out is that spaying and neutering is not a black and white issue and if you've been subscribed here for a while, you know that there are plenty of reasons to do it, just as well as there are plenty of reasons to not spay and neuter your pet. So it's not a one size fits all, and it really depends on the pet owner and what's best for their situation. But if you're here on this video, that means you've already made that decision. So I'm not gonna get into that argument today. We're just gonna talk about what you need to know now that you've decided to spay or neuter your rabbit. So of course there's risk to any surgery, but the risk for spaying and neutering a rabbit is a little bit higher than with, for example, getting your dog spayed. And I really think that the reason for that is that there are a lot of vets that are uh, doing the surgery that are just not knowledgeable enough about rabbits in order to uh, really make it a successful experience for everyone. And so I really think that if you find the right vet and you're just careful with all of your decisions, it's something that's really not as risky as it might seem. So the very first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to find a veterinarian that sees rabbits, not just the average dog and cat vet. These are considered exotic animals in veterinary medicine, even though they are extremely domesticated, um, but it's gonna be a vet that sees exotics and particularly a vet that does treat rabbits. Now, I've broken it down to three main questions that you're gonna to wanna to ask your veterinarian. The very first question is, do you require the rabbit to be fasting or non-fasting? The correct answer to this is non-fasting. So when you take your dog to the vet for a neuter, typically they're gonna ask you to stop feeding the dog eight to 12 hours before the surgery. And this is because the medication used can sometimes make the dog nauseous and it, the dog could be vomiting during that time. And this makes it um, very dangerous for the entire process. Now, the case for rabbits is they cannot vomit. So that completely takes away that risk factor and they won't have that problem going on. So they need to actually be eating. You don't want to take the rabbit fasting. So a lot of times vets that require the rabbit to be fasting actually lose the rabbit because the rabbit was not eating. Rabbits actually can't fast for eight to 12 hours. Their stomach will go into GI stasis and basically that means that they're going to get very sick and that issue alone can kill them. So that's why uh, rabbits often die in those situations. It has nothing to do with the surgery. It actually just has to do with the fact that the rabbit was not eating. So you wanna go with a veterinarian that wants your rabbit to have food brought in with them. Now, this is probably the biggest red flag. If you hear a veterinarian say that they want the rabbit fasting, I would run the other way and I wouldn't let them treat my rabbit for any type of problem. Now, question number two is going to be, do you use gas or intubation? And the correct answer is intubation. 
So gas is actually really dangerous for rabbits. They have extremely delicate respiratory systems and if gas is used on them, they can actually die days after surgery. So that's something really dangerous. Intubation though is difficult on an animal this size. That's why sometimes they do want to use gas. However, it's so much safer to use intubation. And if you find a veterinarian that is willing to do intubation on a rabbit, that means that they are very confident in their skills and it's someone who's gonna really do a good job with your rabbit. Now, question number three is, do you provide pain medication? Now, you might think that this is obvious, but it's not. And not every veterinarian provides medication when performing a surgery. It's something that people just expect because they're going through a surgery. This is going to be painful. It's a big deal. And people just assume. But please don't ever assume that for any animal. Always ask if pain meds are going to be given to your animal. But it's just not always the case and you want to make sure that the vet is going to include pain meds. Now when I got Hazel here neutered, it was an interesting experience to say the least. Those of you who follow me over on Instagram know that I'm in an area where we don't have a lot of very good vet care for any animal, let alone for rabbits. Luckily, I was able to find a vet who did answer all three of these questions correctly and we decided to overlook the fact that she wanted Hazel to only eat orchid hay and didn't really know there was any other types of grass hay and really what she meant was orchard hay and that was a whole thing. But as far as um, like the actual, actual surgery and everything like that went, um, she did a really good job and they were able to um, just assure me that all of those things were going to be followed and so that's why I decided to go there. Um, but like I said, it's just really important to ask your vet questions and make sure they're going to um, be doing a really good job with your rabbit. And it can be a little bit of an ordeal, like we spent at least six hours uh, just in waiting rooms between like appointments, um, trying to get his surgery, but it went really well and um, Hazel was absolutely amazing. Uh, he was so good about taking his pain medication every day, which was for a couple of days after the surgery. Now, when making the appointment, you're also going to want to ask what age your rabbit has to be for the vet to see them for the surgery. It varies by vet. Younger rabbits do have an easier time when getting the surgery done. Now, you're also going to want to ask the cost of the surgery as well as the cost of the pre-op. Now, most vets will require to see the rabbit ahead of time and um, this can increase the cost of the overall surgery that you're you know, gonna have to do. And at the pre-op, they will go over all of the costs for the surgery. And there are a lot of charges that get added into this. And at that time, you'll be able to like look it over and see which things you can take out and which things are necessary. A lot of times there are added costs to any surgery really um, at a vet's office. That is just things to kind of um, increase the bill. And a lot of times you can cut out some of those charges. Some of those things just aren't necessary, aren't needed. Um, for example, if your animal needs a cone, a lot of times you can just buy one cheaper off the internet or even get one for free from Facebook. And that's something you can take off the charge of your overall cost. Now the surgery itself varies a lot by cost and it's gonna be by you know region, where you are, as well as which vet you're going with. I have seen, uh, for example, neuters as low as $80, but um, as high as like $450. And I'm sure that's not even the highest. Um, if you guys wanna write down below in the comments what you've paid for your pet surgeries, um, cause yeah, this is something that can really get expensive. Now here's some of the things that you can expect the day of surgery. A good veterinarian will want your rabbit to go with food. So that's really important. No fasting, your pet's gonna be on its usual, um, diet, feeding schedule, and then you're going to want to take its pellets and its hay in with it to the surgery because they want your rabbit to eat immediately afterwards. And that's a really good sign. A good vet won't actually let your rabbit go home until your rabbit is eating um, by itself, fully alert and all of that. Now, if your rabbit is not eating after surgery, uh, you will want to have critical care for them. That's something you should order ahead of time before the surgery. That way you have it on hand. Critical care can be syringe fed to them. Now this is extremely important because this is gonna keep your rabbit from going into GI stasis. If for some reason they're not feeling good after their surgery, you can keep food in their stomach until they start to feel well enough to eat on their own. 
Remember, GI stasis is really going to be the most dangerous thing with this entire process. And you can uh, store critical care in the freezer, so it's just something good to have on hand. Anytime your rabbit gets sick, this is really going to save their life. Now when you bring your rabbit home, you're going to want to put them in a small cage by themselves. Um, something really clean and small so that they can't be running around and jumping. This is where those tiny little PetSmart cages come in super handy. That is actually perfect for this situation. I like to use fleece on it. That way it's just super easy to keep clean and change out because you're going to want to make sure that their incision site and all of that stay very clean. Um, some rabbits do need a cone, some don't. You do not want them picking at their stitches and opening that up because that is a dangerous situation that can become deadly very quickly. So make sure your rabbit is not picking at that. And of course your rabbit should be in a cage by themselves during this time. It's really important to allow them this process to heal. This was something that was really hard for Hazel and Clover. Um, they hated being separated, but it's something that was necessary and very much worth it since they are a female male bonded pair. So it was worth um, putting them through that and getting the surgery done. And that's basically it. I know that this can be a really scary process and there's a lot of hesitation with it because you don't want to lose your rabbit, but it is really not too dangerous of a process if you find the right vet and ask all the right questions. So I hope this helps you and I hope it makes your experience more successful with it. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to follow me over on Instagram and TikTok and I will see you guys next time.